Adina Friedman is an extraordinary example of leadership in business. From her early start at NASDAQ to her time at the Carlyle Group, and then returning as president and CEO of NASDAQ, Adina's tireless determination towards innovation and her business acumen clearly sets her apart in all that she does. At the end of the day, my job is predicated on making NASDAQ an incredibly successful business for the long term. And whether I'm a male or a female, that's what I'm going to be measured on. That's my report card. Adina's passion and dedication to lead NASDAQ and its employees is his simplery. With Adina at the helm, she will no doubt take NASDAQ to extraordinary heights and beyond. To present the Distinguished Business Leadership Award, please welcome co-founder and co-chairman of the Carlyle Group, David M. Rubenstein. Over the years, I've made a number of personnel decisions at Carlyle. Um, I hired a young man uh, out of Harvard Business School, um, Glenn Youngkin, and he was okay. Um, I don't know what he did. He decided to leave. I hired another uh, person out of government, uh, Jay Powell. He decided to leave also. Uh, I don't know what he's doing either. But in some of my personnel decisions, I've made some pretty good decisions and some pretty bad decisions. Um, I'll let you judge whether those decisions were good. But there was one person I interviewed once who was simultaneously the best personnel decision I made and the worst personnel decision I made, and that was Adina Friedman. And let me explain. Carla was looking for a chief financial officer, and we interviewed a number of people, weren't happy with any of the people we saw, and then I interviewed Adina Friedman, and in 10 minutes I said, excuse me, I called my partners and said, stop all the interviewing, I've just spent 10 minutes with the person, this is the perfect person. She's smart, experienced, hardworking, and she really knows finance, and it's perfect. And so we immediately hired her, and she served as our chief financial officer in a period of great growth for our firm, and she helped us go public in 2012. Uh, at that time, uh, I thought she would, if she stayed, she would wind up probably running the company at some day, and she was extremely talented, but she told me that she had an offer not too long thereafter, to go back to the place she'd previously been, NASDAQ, where once she did some interim job, she would wind up most likely as the CEO, which she did in 2017. And uh, the worst personnel decision was we let her go, in the sense that we should have said, become the CEO of Carlisle now. The founders, get rid of us, get, put her in. If we put her in, the company would be much more valuable today than it is, and we're doing much more successfully than it is. That was my worst personnel decision, is letting her go back to NASDAQ. Because let me tell you what she's done at NASDAQ. When she took over at NASDAQ, the market capitalization was roughly $11 billion. Now it's roughly about $28 billion. So it's up about 146%. Their stock is up about 144%, or 15% a year. And honestly, Carlisle has not gone up 15% a year. Uh, so um, many times at night, I think about what a mistake I made to not let her be the CEO right away. But she's done better things, and she's done a terrific job, and she has a great future. Um, I thought she should be the Secretary of Treasury in the beginning of this administration. I thought, I told a number of people, uh, we should finally have a woman Secretary of the Treasury. Um, finally time, but uh, they found an, another woman um, who was uh, uh, available, and Adina was not really interested in leaving, and she was really interested in continuing to run NASDAQ. And uh, she's done a great job there, but there are other great things in her future, there's no doubt, because she's so smart, talented, knows how to get along with people, and she, what she's done for NASDAQ is not only increase its market value, but she's made it more than an exchange. Um, many of you who are not in the business world may think it's like the New York Stock Exchange. It's not. 
it, it does have an exchange element to it, but it's, it provides enormous amounts of technology to exchanges around the world, and it, it, it has technology relating to cyber technology and cyber security that is really second to none. So she's really modernized uh, the exchange, she's made it global, and she's made it one of the most admired companies in the financial service world. So, um, as I've said to some of you before, perhaps you've heard me say this, it is a strange situation that in our country, when we only had 300, we only had, uh, we had about 3 million people in this country. We produced George Washington, um, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, John Jay, Alexander Hamilton. Now we have 330 million people in the country. Where are the George Washingtons and the Thomas Jeffersons and the James Madisons? Well, I've often thought they were in private equity. But actually, <laughs> there is one person who is not in private equity who is as good as the people that I just mentioned, and that is Adina Friedman. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a president of the United States someday who would be, you know, a great financial executive, somebody who's run a company, knows how to get along with people, very smart, respected all around the world. And so someday, I think that Adina Friedman will be the first female to be president of the United States which would be a good thing. Now, the principal problem with that is she's uh, about 44 decades too young. Uh, you need to be about 75 to 80 to be taken seriously um, as president, so she's got a long way to go. But mark my words, at some point, we'll have a female president, and I think her first name is going to be Adina. Adina? Thank you for everything you've done for Carlisle, and thank you what you've done for our financial service system around the world. Could you please come up and accept the award? That was unexpected. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. What a great honor it is to be recognized tonight as a recipient of the Distinguished Leadership Award. I am truly humbled to be among this amazing and incredible group of accomplished and groundbreaking leaders receiving this award tonight. It's also an honor to be recognized by the Atlantic Council, an organization that recognizes a fundamental truth about the moment that we're living in. When faced with global challenges, we must find global solutions. And this is, in fact, the ethos at NASDAQ. We know that markets are foundational to strong economies and to vibrant e uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems. And that's why we're committed to using our expertise and our technology to help build trusted infra market infrastructure all over the world. In addition to serving our own markets, both in the United States, and we also own many of the markets in the Nordics, with our technology and expertise, our technology powers mission-critical um, operations at more than 2,300 financial institutions and 130 marketplaces worldwide. Our marketplace clients rely upon us to help them build vibrant capital markets within their countries, which then serve as, as the underpinning of their economies. Additionally, our bank clients turn to us to help them eradicate criminal activity within their banking networks with our world-class anti-financial crime technology solutions. While our technology serves many economies in the established markets, such as uh, Switzerland, Japan, Singapore, to name a few, we are very proud in the emerging markets as well. We serve uh, markets in, in places like Indonesia, Thailand, Chile, just um, to name a few as well. We have many markets in the emerging world. And then there we can support their efforts to bring in more foreign investment through well-functioning, high integrity, and vibrant capital markets. And that kind of reach and that kind of responsibility is what makes our team at NASDAQ really excited to get up every single day, come to work, and to power markets for the future. It's also what drives our commitment to becoming the trusted fabric to the global financial system. So I want to thank all of you here. I want to thank John Rogers. Um, you have been such a supporter and a friend over many years. 
I also want to thank my husband, Mike, and my best friend, Nancy, who's here tonight. It's so nice of them to join me for this. And I want to thank all of you for this great recognition. Thank you very much.